talk about Hubble's law and redshift and how this helps explain that our universe is expanding. We'll be talking about Edwin Hubble the person, not Hubble the Space Telescope, which you're probably more familiar about, but what you should know is named after Edwin Hubble. In 1929, Edwin Hubble confirmed that our universe was expanding. He found that nearly all deep space objects were moving away from the Earth and had a Doppler shift, or more specifically, a red shift. He also generally observed that the further away an object was from the Earth, the faster it was moving away from the Earth. Through this discovery, Edwin Hubble was able to validate that our universe was indeed expanding. This also became a key evidence of the Big Bang Theory. Now, to be able to understand Hubble's law, we first need to be able to understand the Doppler effect and specifically what a redshift is. Now, the Doppler effect is the apparent change in the frequency of a wave that's caused by the apparent motion between the observer and the source of the wave. To really understand what this means, we need to start with an example. Let's start with an object that's emitting a wave. Now, this could be any type of wave. It could be a sound wave or a light wave or even waves on water. Let's look at an example of a star that's emitting light, since this applies most closely to Hubble's law. Here we have a star that's emitting light, and we see the waves of light moving away from this star. Now when that star moves, or the object moves, we can see the Doppler effect. We can see that when that object's moving, the waves in front of that object are building up, and the waves behind it are being spread out. Now when our observer is in front of this moving object, and the object is moving towards the observer, the waves are bunched up and they represent a higher frequency. But when the observer is behind the object and the object is moving away, those waves are more spread out, but they represent a lower frequency than when the object is stationary. Now you've probably experienced this when a car, a train, or an ambulance drives past you with its siren or horn blare. As the train is moving towards you, it has a higher pitch sound, and once it moves past you, it then has a lower pitch sound. Now the same thing is true for stars. Except for we don't hear the light coming from stars, we can see it. But, even more particular, we can't see the changes in these frequencies with our naked eye. We have to use special equipment and special processes to do this. We use the spectrum of light from a star or other object to tell if it's moving towards us or moving away from us. It's important to understand that all objects that emit light give off specific spectral lines. Now these spectral lines help astronomers to identify what elements are inside of stars or galaxies, but they can also be used to tell if that object is moving away or moving toward the observer based on the movement of those spectral lines. Now just as the apparent frequency of the car changes as it's moving toward or away from the observer, the apparent frequency of the light coming from a star also shifts. The light of a star will either shift to the blue side of the spectrum if it's moving towards the observer, or to the red side of the spectrum if it's moving away from the observer. Hence the term redshift. Light from a star or other object that's moving away from the Earth is termed to be redshift, meaning that the light from that object is shifted towards the red side of the spectrum. Now we can use this tool to determine two things. First, we can determine if an object's moving towards the Earth or away from the Earth but also based on how much it shifts, we can determine how fast that object is moving either towards or away from the Earth. Now back to Hubble's law. It was this spectral shifting that he used to identify whether the objects in the universe were moving towards or away from the Earth. And he determined that nearly all objects in the entire universe were moving away from the Earth. And he also determined that the farther away an object was, the faster it was moving away. Now this helps to support the Big Bang Theory because if we took that universe where everything is moving away and the farther away something is, the faster it's moving, and we ran it in reverse, all of those things would move back to one central point. This helps to support the Big Bang Theory because it says that the universe should be expanding and that all things came from one central point. 